Hello everyone, Nathan here, and about a month ago, my gaming and editing PC basically stopped working. And while I could still just about play games, even if the PC struggled quite a bit, there was no way I could edit and encode videos. And despite buying a replacement PC pretty much straight away, I'm only just now back up and running properly. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to make a video bringing you my thoughts on some of the games I've been playing recently, or just meant to cover in the past but never got a chance to, and then I'll be back up to date and we can get running properly again. So as you might have gathered from the footage on screen right now, we're going to kick things off with For Honor. Now this is a game that I loved the concept for the first time I heard about it. It just sounds so awesome to pit Vikings, Knights and Samurai all against each other, despite how unrealistic that scenario would actually be. When I played the beta though, I was pretty underwhelmed, to the extent that I almost didn't pick up the game when it got its full release. During that beta, I managed to get my almost dead PC to work and join several games of Dominion with a friend, and what we came across was a game that I could only describe as Runaway Simulator. Every time I got close to winning a one-on-one -on -one duel with an opponent that I'd been tactically battling with for over a minute or two, they'd just turn and run away from the fight before I got to deliver the finishing blow, which just ended up making me incredibly frustrated. And to exacerbate that frustration, the other huge issue was the two, three, or even four-on-one situations. Now, I should make it clear at this point that I'm not particularly fantastic at For Honor, and maybe a better player would have a better time here. But for me and my friend playing the game, it seemed that if you ever got engaged in a fight where you were outnumbered, you either retreated or you died, because you were at such a major disadvantage. It seemed that the game was all about running away or ganging up on someone so they didn't stand a chance. That though does not do this game justice. That's just the Dominion game mode. The game mode, by the way, that Ubisoft pushed massively during marketing, which showed off the game as though it was some kind of MOBA, with little minions running around and points you could take. This, in my opinion, is the worst mode in the game, because it encourages these incredibly cheap tactics. If you want to win, you run away or you team up, that is how you do it. The duel mode, on the other hand, is far more enjoyable. The one-on-one -on -one battles where neither player can run away and neither player can get a friend to come and help them makes for a much more appealing and pretty damn tense game mode. Even this though is not without its problems, as I've personally found the matchmaking system to be abysmal. You'll often notice when queuing up for a match that the player's skill restriction starts at strict, which would lead to a well-matched game, but unfortunately quickly changes to extended and even sometimes to all skill levels. So you can have someone with minimal skill fighting against someone who is literally a pro at the game. I assume they've done this to make queue time shorter, but this regularly leads, for me at least, to an incredibly one-sided game, where I get my face stomped in by someone who's clearly put the hours into getting good. And maybe that's the solution, maybe if I got good myself, I'd have more fun. But I'm not prepared to be destroyed game after game for 100 or so hours, until I eventually reach a point where I can compete with those top tier players. It just wouldn't be fun. As I said before though, I'm not naturally great at these fighting games, and maybe this wouldn't be such a barrier for someone who is that way inclined. The problem here for me though is that I saw this as an entry level fighting game, and for someone trying to enter and being matched up against way better players time and time again, it's a bit off-putting. So I've been pretty underwhelmed with the multiplayer, and I'm slightly concerned by the decreasing player base, which probably hasn't been helped by connectivity issues at launch. For now though, there's certainly enough people playing to find a game without any real problem. There is a single player campaign as well, but in all honesty it seems like a bit of an afterthought, and should be considered more of a tutorial for multiplayer, rather than a proper story experience. It does let you try out all different heroes, and it gives you a fair amount of steel, but other than that it's not a massively enjoyable campaign. The final thing I want to talk about here is the in-game currency, that steel that I just mentioned. Now this can be exchanged for in-game items, some of which are cosmetic, but some of which offer stat upgrades, which to my mind should not happen in a multiplayer game, because it throws off all sense of balance. Worse than that though, this steel can be bought for real money, adding in the potential of that nasty old pay to win. Now I'm not 100% sure how much this gear affects the game, 
but I've seen videos online that seem to suggest that gear can make you clearly overpowered, and even if that isn't the case, it still just seems very greedy to have this type of microtransaction in a full price game. So overall, I'm not particularly enamoured with For Honor. I think if fighting games are your thing, then you might enjoy this more than me, and maybe if you wanted to get into fighting games this might be a good point of entry, at least if they sort out the matchmaking. For me though, I think I've pretty much had my fill of For Honor. Next up is Rise and Shine. This is a 2D side-scrolling shooter published by Adult Swim and developed by Super Awesome Hyperdimensional Mega Team. That took a lot of saying, and that alone should give you some idea of what type of game this is. You play as a 10 year old called Rise who's trying to save his home world. That world is a video game planet called Game Earth that is jam packed with references to other video games. For the perfect example of this, your gun, which is the titular Shine, is given to you by a character called the Legendary Warrior, and without wanting to be too direct here, the Legendary Warrior is Link or at least the closest thing to Link that the developer could make and still avoid copyright issues. Now for me, I actually found myself enjoying those references as I went through the levels, and the game certainly has a decent sense of humour that you'll find in a lot of Adult Swim games. And that sense of humour mixed with the beautiful style, especially in cutscenes, which are almost like mini comics, make for a very strong initial experience. The gameplay though is not quite as strong. It's not bad by any means, but the combat is pretty basic, with a typical peek out of cover when there's no bullets flying at you and kill whatever you can before ducking back behind that cover system. Despite different types of bullets and gun upgrades that you pick up along the way, this makes killing the basic enemies of the game pretty repetitive. The game has also been made to be very difficult, and a lack of tight controls, particularly when aiming, make beating the challenge more frustrating than it needs to be. Personally, I find the level of difficulty here a bit unnecessary, with a lot of enemy attacks resulting in one-hit deaths and some bullet hell elements making avoiding those attacks quite challenging at times. There will be people out there who like this though, and I certainly don't feel as though Rise and Shine is unbeatable or anything. Just for me, in order to beat it, it would be very frustrating. There are some interesting little puzzles to solve which use the remote controlled bullets to reach places that would be impossible to get to otherwise, and these break up the combat sections fairly well. It seems though that the game is only around 2 hours long, which could make the £11 price tag a little hard to swallow for some, and makes me think that the difficulty of the game has been put there purely to pad out what little is there and make it last longer. My overall thoughts on Rise and Shine then are mixed. The looks and theme of the game are top notch in my opinion, but I think the biggest change I would make would be to add in an easier difficulty level for the game, which I feel would make for a much more enjoyable experience for a lot of people like me. And of course for anyone else who still wants that challenging experience or even wants to replay it and add more time to the game, then those harder difficulty options would still be there if you wanted to play that way. The final station is rather suitably the final game I want to talk about today, and again we have some of those 2D side scrolling shooter mechanics, this time coming from Do My Best Games. This I feel is a much more compelling gameplay experience as you guide your train through an apocalyptic world. You play as a train driver and this sole fact adds so much to the game. Not only does it allow you to move from town to town, which offers different environments, weather, and my favourite, different states of the population from generally normal at the start of the game, changing to terrified or even dead as you move forward, but the train also adds a different gameplay element, as when you're travelling around, you're required to look after the passengers on the train, taking care of their food and health needs, and you have to look after the train itself. This adds a resource management element to the game and adds a need for exploration when you're in towns. Yes, you can heal yourself using that medkit, but then it won't be available to keep your passengers alive. And yes, you could skip exploring that dodgy looking room over there, but it might contain vital supplies. This makes for a nice little risk reward system and the fact that what you do off the train affects what you're able to do on the train so much makes for an interesting gameplay experience. The combat is also stronger in my opinion than that of Rise and Shine, again because of that lack of resources. Ammo is difficult to find, and if you want to do well, you'll find yourself punching a lot of enemies to death and saving those precious bullets. 
Aiming also feels better, which it honestly needs to because headshots can be quite important, and even if there is a lot of walking backwards and shooting, it doesn't seem to become boring. The story too is pretty strong, with more than a touch of mystery as to what's happening with this world and why everything is turning from what appeared to be a happy place into a nightmarish region to try and survive in. There are chat logs and little messages dotted about the place which all make the world feel like it was alive, and somehow, somehow in this dismal world, they've managed to add in some humour. All of this though I would say is more of an atmosphere than a story in itself, but it's still fantastic world building in my opinion. As for the looks of the game, well, of course it's all subjective, and it depends on whether or not you like the pixel aesthetic here, but I personally found it to be quite charming. So you'll notice I've been quite positive about this one so far, and my overall opinion is just that, quite positive. I will say that I wish there was more to do on the actual train itself, not necessarily with regards to the passengers because I feel there is enough interaction with them, but more relating to the repairs. In the two or so hours that I've played so far, the repairs that you have to carry out are very simple, and only ever happen to one component at a time, meaning that it's very easy to keep on top of. On the whole though, this has been a surprising little gem for me, and I've been enjoying my time with it. Again, a price tag of £11 may put some people off, so maybe wait for a sale if you feel that way, but for me, I think it's decent value for the amount of fun I've had. So that's about it for today, it's fair to say that I've hated being away from YouTube for this long, and hopefully now I have my new PC and I'm able to make videos again, I'll be back working at full capacity. I'm semi tempted to show off the new PC actually and share my horrible experiences in getting it and making it work, so maybe I'll do that, maybe I won't, but until then, if you enjoyed the video I'd be very appreciative if you'd click that like button down below, let me know what you think of these games in the comments, and subscribe for more like this in the future, although hopefully now we'll be back with more regular content, instead of stuff catching up on what I've missed before. Anyway, thanks for watching, I've been Nathan and I'll see you next time.